technology. Uh, let's see, let's try to get back online here. Um, hi everyone, I'm sorry, we just had a technology, technology snafu. Okay, you're back, let's get you back on. I disconnected from my Wi-Fi in case that was the issue. Full cellular. So welcome back. Okay, we're back. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think that was my, that was definitely my connection. Uh, so I don't know what you caught there, but um, I was just saying that I was just thanking you so much for your time to come on this platform and share your story. And, and uh, I'm just so excited for both of our audiences to kind of hear more about you, to get to know you even more. And, um, and you have such a powerful message. And so thank you for making the time. I know as a solopreneur, uh, these are busy times. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Tosca. Oh my gosh, my absolute pleasure. And uh, I like to say, you know, that, that I get to see you for, I get to have you on my platform first before like Gail King. Uh, <laughs> and I can say, I, do, I already know about her, y'all. Like I was, I was on it. <laughs> uh, oh, I love your best friend is on here. She's like giving you props and <laughs> encouragement. So, okay, so, so how I like to start these conversations is just to help people kind of get to know a little bit more about you. So one of the questions I like to ask is, like, what is it about your background, your life experiences that kind of shaped who you are, just so that people can kind of get to know Danielle? So something about my background, well, a bunch of things have shaped who I am, but there's one particular um, – thing that shaped who I am is being first generation American. Both of my parents are from West Africa, Liberia, and it was a war stricken, war torn um, country. When I was 13, I was able to go back um, for the first time and I was able to see all the tribulations, the trials and tribulations that the children had to go through just to go to school. And I would listen to my father's stories and how he, he would have to wake up three, four o'clock in the morning, boil eggs and sell it on the road so he could pay for his uniform and his school tuition. And those are some of the, the, the stories and being able to see it firsthand when I visited to see how fortunate I was growing up as a child in America and being able to take vacations to Liberia and go back home um, to my reality, which was in, in comparison, nothing like theirs, um, allowed me to see, you know what, that I can make a difference in, 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 in someone's lives or just, and just with, with myself, I can make a difference just based on my actions on how I can, on, on how I move through the world and how people view me through the world. Mm -hmm. And so when, like, what did that, what did that change? Like when you did come back from that, like, did you feel like you were different? Did you approach your life differently at that young age? Or was it something that kind of like settled into you and marinated as you, you know, as you kind of grew into yourself? So it, I think it was a combination of both. Like as at, at 13, 12, 13, I, I was able to view and see that these kids are waking up three, four o'clock in the morning, like my father said. So nothing changed in, 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 all, those, in all those years, um, mm -hmm. that, that this is something that's still happening. I think mm -hmm. what happened is that I began to see, you know, uh, the stories that my parents are telling me is not, they're, they're not just, it's not fabricated. And mm -hmm. because I'm here, I actually have this opportunity to, to, make, my, to, 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 to make my life better and even to help them and possibly even go back to Liberia and, and help the children with free education versus them having to wake up boiling eggs, selling eggs just to buy um, their uniforms and to pay for their school tuition. Mm -hmm. I think that it, it, it shaped me from the moment I saw it up into an adult, even to this day, because this is something that I, and anyone that knows me knows that that's one of the, that's, that's one of the things that I talk about. My trip to Liberia as a kid mm -hmm. helped shape mm -hmm. who I am today. Mm. And, and, uh, you know, I know just having a lot of interactions and friends, you know, with, that are kind of first generation that sometimes there's a lot of pressure also put on, on you. Like, did you feel 
pressure from your parents to, you know, whether it's to be a doctor or, you know, some of those, those common things that you hear or, um, or to do good or any, you know, did you get that pressure for them or was it something that you, you felt so, for yourself and what you wanted for yourself? My parents, I'm, I, I would say my parents never put pressure on me to, um, to be, a to be a doctor, to be a lawyer. They wanted me to be who it is that I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I put the pressure on myself because I knew, I felt like I had something to prove. Um, mm -hmm. I am first generation American. My, 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 my parents' story is not the typical story that you hear where they, where he, they, they came here with nothing and, and, then they, and, and then they turned to something. My father's story is a little bit different. My father was um, the youngest African to ever lead an, um, an international company. So he was sought out in Liberia. So a, um, a, um, an international company in the States went to Liberia, sought him out and brought him to America. That mm -hmm. company flopped and they took advantage of him. And that's when my father's story turned to the typical immigrant story where um, he was, he had no money. He was homeless and he was sleeping in Central, um, Central Park on the, on, on, on the benches. He would dress up in his suit every day and walk to McDonald's to get ready and then go on an interview so he can figure out how he's going to provide for his family. So my, if my father can overcome these um, obstacles, who am I to be born in this, um, in, in this country to not be able to overcome those obstacles also? So they never put pressure on me to be a doctor. They never put pressure on me to be a lawyer. They put they put pressure on me to just make sure that I go to school and get my education because the only golden diamonds that they could give me is what they say is my education. Mm, mm, wow. Like that's, wow. What an incredible like roller coaster ride for your dad to, 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 to come from this amazing high and then, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. So imagine being born in Liberia, you, you, you passed the, what, what, what they call the SATs here. They call it the national exam there. He got the highest grade in the whole continent of Africa. He became this big manager. An American company is seeking him out. He gets sought out. He gets sent to the States and then boom, they take advantage of him. They pay him nothing. And then the company flops and he's left, he's left homeless. So he, he says this all the time. I didn't come here looking for the American dream. The American dream came looking mm. for me. Mm. So this is why it was, it, I wasn't, I wasn't like pushed or forced to, to um, have that um, pressure to be this or be that because my father came here as a very highly educated man. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he, he set the foundation and the president for, precedent for me um, about going to school, getting my education and just being um, a woman of substance, as he would say. Mm -hmm. And so what did you want for yourself? Like, I, I know that you, you went, you know, and got highly educated. So like, what was it like, you know, when you were, you were going to school, like, what is it that you wanted to do or be or contribute in the world? Like, what was your vision if you had one that, that, during those times? So when I was a little girl, I used to watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I wanted to be a lawyer like Uncle Will. Okay. I'm like, this is, this is the life that want to lead okay i want to be a lawyer anyone that knows me i could i can come up with a good argument i could form, I could form great sentences and i could draft you a letter like it's nobody's business so i wanted to be a lawyer and that's what i wanted to do so i followed that path i said you know what before i go to law school let me see if if this is for me and i'm going to um i'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to school to become a paralegal I went to school, I became a paralegal. I realized, you know what, this is not really something that I wanna do, but eh, I got my degree in paralegal studies. From there I said, I wanna try my hand at business. And that's when I got my bachelor's in international business, business administration, and then my MBA um, in management. And from there is where I said, okay, I, I, I no longer, it, it was from there that I, I got the job at a, at, at a bank, the market tanked, the whole entire company just flopped and I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm not, I, I, I really can't continue going from company to company and this, and this is happening. Mm -hmm. So a part of me always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I was too afraid to venture out to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. but then the big, a, a, a big blessing happened that being, um, being laid off and being home with my kids I, I, at, at that time, it wasn't a blessing to me. I was very, 
um, depressed. I was very sad and I gained a lot of weight and I just wasn't happy with myself. And I said, as a joke, I'm going to apply to a, um, a job at a fitness studio and, and let's just see where it goes. That's what I did. I applied to a job at a fitness studio, overweight, unhappy, and a mom of two. And I said, we're just going to see where, where, where this goes. They loved my resume. They loved, they, they invited me to come in for an interview. And in my mind, I'm like, how the hell do you dress for a job at a gym and you're overweight? You know, how do you do that? I went in there with a suit like I was going on a Wall Street job. <laughs> I had my hair slicked back in a bun, lipstick on, looking dapper. I went to this interview. I, I stole their hearts. I got hired on the spot as a director of membership services and development. And from there um, is when um, I, I realized that although this is not my company that I'm running, I could run a company. I, I saw mm -hmm. that I was capable and able to run um, a, a business because at that time the owners of the company just they, they they went on vacation for two weeks and they left me in charge I was I literally got trained a week and they left me in charge for two weeks and I'm like oh I got this in the bag a year into my employment that um, the, the the owners of that comp uh, the owner of that company came in and said that she no longer wants to have this business anymore and she's shutting it down and it was from there that I used that as my opportunity to start my own business and that's how I became an entrepreneur. Oh my gosh. So I just have to go back to something that you said and dig oh. in a little bit. Okay. Cause you were like, you said like, as a joke, you, as a you joke. went, yeah. Now, you know, to, to really put yourself out there to like, I just want to dig into that because do like, is it like, was it, was it like a joke because you were just like having no expectations or hopes about it? Like, like, was it, were you, were you positioning it as a joke to protect yourself from disappointment? Like, was there something you actually desire from that? Because to, to, to really go through that process to like, you know, put your face on and your clothes and like go interview, right? Like you, like there has to be something there other than I'm just, I'm just going to joke on myself. I don't know. That's just how I'm thinking about it. But I'm just so curious. It, it, your, your thought process is, is, is correct. It's, it's all of the above. It's all of the above. Mm -hmm. For me, I applied as a joke because the stereotypical um, person that you would think that works at a gym would be this like, you know, mm -hmm. chiseled body, um, um, probably not having as many kids as I have had and, and are definitely not going to be overweight working mm. in him. that, especially back in, 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 in those days. Now mm. this, all this body and in, um, in, inclusivity is, is, is acceptable. But back then it, it really, it really wasn't. Um, I applied as a joke because I just did not think that they would reach out to me at all. I didn't mm. think that they would call me because number one, I had no experience working in a gym. That's first and foremost. And number two, although they couldn't see me, when they saw me, it would have immediately been, oh, <laughs> is she here? You know? But it was completely the exact opposite of what it is that transpired and why I'm here today having this conversation with you, right? And do you think there was something underneath all of that where you were getting pulled? Like the universe was like, you're just yeah. applying to this. <laughs> like, like so, so I'm, I'm big on manifestation and, and and although it was a joke i was manifesting what i wanted for myself in my life i wanted to lose weight i wanted that accountability i wanted someone to show me how to do it but in my mind you know what instead of me putting myself out there and becoming a trainer or, or even being a member of one of the classes let me work in the background let me let me be behind the scenes so i can watch and, and to see if i can be a part of this community so that's where my mindset was i wasn't i wasn't applying to be on the floor i applied to be in the back you know because i just thought that's where i belonged i belonged in the back and i didn't belong yeah. in the back belong in the front <laughs> yes you do girl yes you do front and center yes no i love thank you for thank you for divulging you know because i think oftentimes you know when we we get lost uh we feel lost like we don't know what's next like we actually, there's a lot of information that we have, you know, like, are we honoring it? Like, are we seeing it? And sometimes we can't see it in those moments, but when we look back and we can say, oh, like, yeah, I was manifesting it. I wanted this for my life. And then right. how it transpired, what wasn't, you know, how we may normally think of like a pathway 
to better health to finding out how you can, you know, get that back for yourself, which is what you wanted. And, um, and it, yeah, and I think, you know, um, it's just how we, how we tell ourselves our stories of our right. journey, right? Like how you probably told it back then versus how you're telling it now are probably two different things. Correct. Correct. Because then also, let me, let, let me also add that in my mind, I don't know why I thought that working at a gym would give me flexibility to be a mom. I don't know why mm. I thought that those two, um, those two, um, um, I, I, ideas or ideals worked co cohesively for me to be, mm -hmm. to be a mom to my children. That was one of the prerequisites of why I applied to the job. Yes, I wanted to lose weight. Yes, I wanted to make money. Um, but I also, my main focus and my main goal was well, I need to be a mom to my kids. I want to be able to make mm -hmm. my own schedule, take them to violin lessons, basketball, whatever it else that they needed to go to, but I needed, to, I needed it to be flexible. I don't know why and to this, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, make, it, it, it makes sense now because I was able to make my own schedule, but I don't know why mm -hmm. I thought that at a gym would have allowed me to do that. But it, it all did. It, it all manifested into everything that I wanted um, and needed and at, that, at that moment. Yeah, you know, and it, it makes me think of, I, I was talking to a friend, I think it was like this week, and it was just like this idea of, like you said, you don't know why you thought that this was going to mm -hmm. like be a, fle a flexible working environment, but it was, but your gut kind of knew that there was something mm -hmm. about this that was going to work for you. That, that was your top value at the time of like being able to raise right. your kids the way you wanted. Right. And I think sometimes we dismiss, I think sometimes we can easily dismiss the gut feeling and then go right to our head and go to like pros and cons on paper. And then we can easily cut ourselves off from that opportunity, which clearly you didn't do, which is like, a testament to you trusting yourself. Um, but I think a lot of people, they get that intuitive hit and mm -hmm. they, they go right to their head and, and they don't follow that path and they end up maybe going, going a roundabout way and end up getting there eventually. But I, I, I just want to, wanted to pause on that because I think we are so encouraged to go right to our head. Um, right. For our and, answers. And I and I did go right to my to my head when I was applying for the job because one of the questions right. was, um, "What did you eat for breakfast?" And I lied and I said I, I had a steak, egg, and cheese from McDonald's with um, extra sauce and and I would and and I lied because I'm like these people are not going to hire me once they see me they're not and I did everything mm -hmm. to not get the job and I got the damn job. <laughs> well, that's funny because you were basically sabotaging yourself in yes. the process yes. and what was for you didn't pass you by. Exactly. They loved my response. They absolutely loved my response because at the end I put just joking. I had oatmeal and orange juice, but they loved my response, but they saw the humor in me, mm. but that was the chance that I was taking to, sh to, mm. to let people know that, you know what, I'm... I'm I'm pretty cool to be around. So if this is what this is who you see on paper, this is who you'll see in person. Oh my God. I love that. I feel like <laughs> if people take nothing away, it's just like be yourself, infuse your personality. I talk to people all, all the time, you know, as a career coach, as a leadership coach, it's like it's like the, the best thing you can do for yourself is be yourself. Yes. And and you're not fooling and then you're not fooling anybody. And that because you know, once we stop being ourselves and then we end up, you know, getting the yes and then we're like, oh shit, who am I supposed to be now? Because exactly. I want this other person. Now right. what? Right, right, right. Yeah. I, I, I step into every room as Danielle. You're going to get Danielle, whether you're at a corporate event, you're going to get Danielle, whether you're around the way and in, um, in, in, in playing in the park, you're going to get Danielle everywhere. This is who you see is who you get. That's for sure. See, that's why we're soul sisters, because like, I'm, I, I'm the same way, like that authenticity that like, you know, I, you know, I don't be around a bush, what you see is what you get, you know. <laughs> uh like it or not <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so, yes. um so okay so so okay so let's let's start then with you you know for the second time you you had a job and through no fault of your own like it disappeared like it's no longer <laughs> to you. and that's when you said that's when you decided to take it into your own hands and be an entrepreneur so tell me what that was like for you? What was that process of like, holy, you know, crap, another thing out of your control happened. You got two. How old were your kids at that point? My kids, my son, I would say was five and my daughter was three. 
Oh. Yeah. If not, maybe just a little bit older. But um, it was a very disappointing time. And I honestly, I was beating myself up like, something is something mm. wrong with me? Because mm. how many times is this going to happen? Like, I, I, why is it that it, it, it takes such a long time for me to get a great job or a great mm. position? And then when I finally capture it, it goes away again. Like, what's wrong with me? Um, is it something that I'm doing wrong? Or I, I just, I blamed myself. That's, 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 that's just, that was just my, um, my, my natural reaction was to blame myself as to why these things are not happening and why is it continuing to happen to me? Um, mm -hmm. I was, I happened to be fortunate enough to be surrounded around an amazing, amazing group of women at that, um, at, at that fitness studio who believed in me and, and they were the ones who turned me into an entrepreneur, if you want me to be 100% real. They're like, uh, Danielle, we can't let this gym close. We have to figure something out. This is where we've been at for the past seven years or eight years. Some people have been there for longer than that. We can't let this gym close. What do you think we can do? And that propelled me to say, you know what? I, I loved what I'm doing. I'm the one who brought in all these clients through the consultation process and they all know me um, uh, personally, um, and they and they and they know who I stand, for, who what what I stand for, and what I believe in, and they gave me the drive to become an entrepreneur. So, create. I had a call to action, um, and let these women know that this is something that I'm looking to do. And they got it together. They got their husbands involved. They they created videos to 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 so I can share my story of why we need to keep the gym open or if we can't keep this gym open why we need to get another space i had videos i had emails written they drafted so many different things that we created a, a gofundme page and that's how i started the new body project which is brooklyn's first and only all women's boot camp um studio so i started a company off the backs of the community and no money of my own they believed in me so much that they wanted to um to, to keep this community alive and they and and they they kind of selected me to to do this wow like I, I just crazy right crazy well right? <laughs> you know I think that um you know it reminds me I wrote an article recently about radical uplifting mm -hmm. and and you know with so much going on in the world you know whether it's in our own backyards or you know across oceans like that when you when you are surrounded by people that believe in you, that lift you up, that, that are, they are helping you see yourself and your potential when you can't see it. Like, it's just, it's just priceless. Right. And, and, and we deserve nothing less than that yes. in our lives. Yes. 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 That's so, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I'm like, I'm getting all, I'm getting all wild up. And I'm curious, right? Because you, you know, your journey, right, is like going from school to like high paying bank job to like, you know, working in a fitness studio to entrepreneur. And, you know, what did that look like in terms of who was around you? Did that change? Did people stay with you? Did they fall off? Like, because I, I imagine that through that, there's a lot of personal evolution and growth. And sometimes our vibration changes. And so then who we're around changes. I'm just curious what your experience was with, with your community and your people as you were shifting and finding your place in the world. So my community, as far as my bank life, all, everyone from there disappeared. It, it was no longer, I had no communication with not one single human being from my bank life. It wasn't the same type of community that was mm -hmm. cultivated in my gym life, where community was important, commitment to each other was important, um, ho holding each other accountable in a, in a healthy way mm -hmm. was important. That, 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 that corporate culture was a, is a complete juxtaposition than this particular corporate culture that thrives on um, happiness and health. You know, mm. uh, it, 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 it changed completely. My community changed and yeah. it changed for the best, if you ask mm. me. And in the moment, was it hard or did you see that it was for the best? Because I think, again, no. when you're in the messy middle of life and you're dealing with people falling out and you're like, where are all these people that I just spent a year or whatever with? So like, in the yeah. moment, it was extremely difficult. So you're, you're a mom. Um, at, at that time, I, I just had my son, um, and 
I, I bought my first place and I lost my job. Like, how am I going to maintain all of this? And not even one person is calling to see how you're doing, you know, like mm -hmm. check you and your, your, your mental capacity, not, 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 it's nowhere in existence. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, it was difficult because you, you've given your life to this particular corporation and, 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 and a, a mm -hmm. core group of people that's in your department. And you realize that you really, you really meant nothing. But in this other half, um, the new half of building my business, um, when that happened every single day, even to this day, because we haven't even gotten to the other half of how <laughs> Atrium 82 got started. But even to this day, I get emails and messages from my um, fitness community who just checking in on me and, mm. and want to love me and just show me that they appreciate me and still knocking on the door to see, are you reopening yet? Like, I just, I'm just trying to find out because, you know, we need this community. But yes, just the, it was, it's complete night and day. In the beginning, mm -hmm. it was difficult. Um, and then you learn that it's for the best. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate you sharing because I think people that are in the middle and they're and, and it feels like a lot of loss and a lot of grief. It's part of the process. I feel I feel like hopefully people will find solace in that and be like, OK, like this is this chaos, this loss. This is actually part of my growth. And like there's there's light at the other end of this. Yes. So. So, OK, so you, you've got this uh, fitness studio. Um, what year was this? Was 2018 or 2018? Yeah. Uh, 20, 2017, 2017. Okay. So it's humming along. You're building a community. It's coming along. I'm building this community. I find a space that I can rent just some, I, I, I can rent hours from so I can still build this, this community. I'm not making any money. I don't have any employees. I'm doing it all by myself. I'm making so many mistakes. And my, and my, mm -hmm. um, my, my clients are so forgiving because they're like, mm -hmm. we know that you're not a trainer, but we know that you're mm -hmm. trying to keep this community alive. So, um, we're, 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 we're willing to learn with you. So I'm learning and I'm building this business. I, 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 I land in this, I land in this space and the space is not healthy, um, for, for, for me mentally, it's not healthy for my clients mentally. And, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm just trying to figure out, okay, how do I leave from this space and go to a different space to train other clients? That's going to be a little bit more healthy for me to be there. And I go to that space, although it wasn't, um, mentally unhealthy it was physically unhealthy it had mold in the mm. ceilings and it's i'm just like can i when the hell am i gonna get a damn break because i go from one shit show to the next shit show and it's just getting becoming too much so i say to myself you know what this has got to stop i decide to take another leap of faith and i sell my house that i bought when i was 23 and i use those funds to acquire the space that we met at that you came to the open house, which is Atrium 82, which at the time was the new body project. And I build this amazing space that cultivates every single thing that I want in a fitness studio. I want this to be a home where women can feel comfortable to um, work out all different shapes, sizes, backgrounds, you name it. it. They were coming in. I started with 12 clients there. And within 30 days, I went to 65 clients and it just was Booming. I mean, I can't stress the level of booming. It was just growing and growing and growing. And then March 20, what is it, 2020? Was it? Yeah. All the gyms have to shut down. What in the hell? Again? I waited. What do you mean all the gyms have to shut down? I just got my prime. I just was, I just, I was doing the damn thing. I was growing. Okay. I was seeing a profit in my business. I was, I, 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 I was so happy that I made that choice to sell my house to invest in this business. And that happened. And, you know, everyone just thought it's going to be a couple of days, maybe a week, a month, went to three months, went to six months, went to all these months into years. And I cannot open my business. And at this point, I don't even know how to how to function or even think about reopening a business because I have two kids. And now I have to be the gym teacher. I have to be 
English teacher. I have to be the science teacher. I have to be the lunch lady and the supervisor to make sure that no one's burning down my damn house. Because my <laughs> son, while my daughter is in the room doing English class, he's at the stove doing making snacks, burning floors over the stove. And just like, where's your school stomach? Sit in the classroom and don't, and let's just focus on what we have to do here. So can you imagine being, you lost your business, in your mind, like you've lost everything, you everything that you've worked hard for. You're 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 beating yourself up for being stupid for selling your house that you mm -hmm. bought. Um, you're and and investing in this business that now is non-existent. You don't have any time to even think about that, and that because now you have to be a full-time. I mean, you're a full-time mom all the time, but now you have to be a real full-time mom with no break of sending them to school. They have to stay home and be with you this entire time. And one's in science class while the other one is playing the saxophone and the trombone in, in the next room and you're trying to cultivate your thoughts. It's not possible. So the depression set in again. Mm. Mm. Crazy, right? <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I don't even know. I really don't know. Um, so what, so what did you do? Like you, you started to like lose the faith. You talked about falling into depression. Like what, what, what happened? Like, how did you claw your way out of that? It took a while for me to claw my way out of anything. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of talking to myself. It took a lot of everything. Um, but I literally without even trying to um, romanticize anything, woke up and said, I'm not doing this shit anymore. I like, mm. I'm not doing it. Like I literally just, I'm not doing it. I can't, mm. I can't continue to, to live like this, literally staying in the bed all day and just sleeping my, my, my um, troubles away or, or just not even saying anything and just only functioning for my children and then going back in the room and closing the door. That is not a healthy life mm -hmm. to leave. And you can't leave your house mm -hmm. because now you don't, you don't know if you're going to step outside and catch COVID. So I, everything was not in my favor. Everything was not working for me. But I have two kids and that's my reason why mm -hmm. I can't continue to walk this path and stay in this um, way of being because it's not going, to, it's, it's, not, it's not helping anybody for mm -hmm. me to, way so I literally woke up one day and I'm and I said to myself what else can I do with that space mm -hmm. it's always something that the idea that I've that I've um that I've manifested now that I've made happen now is something that I've always wanted to do and I um didn't know how to implement it I wanted I've always wanted my space to be a space where people in the community can come and use when classes were when fitness classes were not taking place. But something is so sim something is so simple as the Olympic grade flooring in the in the space at that time was stopping me because everyone's not going to take off their shoes when they come. And little did I know, just roll the damn things up, and you can have a fitness studio and a wedding in the in in in, in the space at the same at you know at different times. So I. I, I literally said, I can't have this, like, I can't, I can't be like this anymore. I can't, I can't live like this anymore. Let me figure out how I'm going to turn this space into something else. And mm -hmm. I drafted out a few um, ideas and a few names and it was, it was on from there. That's how I'm, it's, it was on from there. And that's how Atrium 82, the intimate gathering space, the micro gathering space, the micro event space came to be. So it's a space where everyone in the community, everyone from around, I have people from, I have people getting married from California coming down to get married in here in November was born, right? So I have a fitness class in, in the day and in evenings um, during the day. And then people are getting married on the weekends or um, earlier in the morning or people are having um, choir rehearsals on Sunday. And it's just a space that is still for the community mm. and by the community. Oh my God, okay, yeah. So, so much I wanna dig, dig into that. And one of the places I wanna start is just to acknowledge that, you know, sometimes we get into dark places and that's okay. And 
And I love that you didn't gloss over it, right? Like, I know we love talking about the messy middle of like, yeah, it was shit for a while. You were, you were in that dark place and you found, it sounds like you found a higher reason for pulling yourself out. Yes. And, and, and I just want to honor like that sometimes we can't pull ourselves out. Sometimes we need therapy. Sometimes we, there's medication, what, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm hearing is you found that higher, a higher reason your, your family, your kids to say, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Something has to change. I have to, it's like, what I'm hearing is that you disrupted yourself. Yes. Yes. I disrupted myself. I had no choice. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that. I had no choice um, mm -hmm. but to disrupt myself, disrupt my way of being in order for me to be able to to make a change. Like mm -hmm. I earlier, I told you that my father always told me that he's raising a woman of substance. I can't be mm -hmm. a woman of substance laying down in my damn bed, uh, right? Mm -hmm. A woman of substance if i'm just crying all day i can't be a woman of substance if i'm beating myself up for for for, for making decisions that at mm -hmm. that time were great decisions but mm -hmm. something that's not in my control yet again for the third time um change my change change the trajectory of my future you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i had to find out what my why is and anyone who mm -hmm. has children know their why is always their damn kids mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. my kids look up to me every single day as this person who is their mother who is a go-getter who is you know this just awesome being like my daughter just the other day um I, I can't remember what we were doing no we, we were driving down the street and then there's a billboard that we see every every time we drive down this particular street and i said I'm going to get you guys on that billboard one day. My daughter in the back seat goes, here she goes, manifesting again. It's going to happen. Here she goes, manifesting again. You know, when mommy says she's going to do something, it gets done. So these are the conversations. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that I, that I hear that I know that they believe in me. They, they really mm -hmm. believe the words that are coming out of my mouth and I need to, you know, take action. And I can't, I can't take action laying down in, in the bed crying and, and the sheets mm -hmm. folded, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, definitely. I, I just, uh, you know, and it makes, well, it makes me think of two things and you pick what, like which one you're resonating with in this moment, which is number one, I, I love to hear about where this, where your passion for community came from. Mm -hmm. And then this, the second piece is, you know, just even going back to, you know, the title of this talk, which, you know, your, your famous saying, if you're, uh, is a liar running out of breath. breath. Yes. So my passion for community came from my parents. When growing up as a child, my house was never an empty house. I grew up in a big, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, one, I'm one of four kids, um, but my parents always helped every single person. If they didn't have a place to stay, mm -hmm. I didn't have my room anymore. My parents would let people stay in our home. Um, anyone didn't have food, my mom always cooked a feast and everyone in the neighborhood would come to eat. So I've, I grew up and saw my parents always doing for the community, providing for the community. And as you know, as many first generations American, they always had to provide for their family back home and, mm. and, and their little um, town. So community has always been something mm. that I grew up um, being around and seeing that you have to, you have to, it, it takes a village. That, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a great African saying proverb. Mm -hmm. It takes a village, right? So I grew up with knowing that it takes a village. Um, mm -hmm. The second um, piece is fear is a liar running out of breath. It's actually from a, that, that, that line is from a, a song, um, a church song, um, a hill song, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's, it's called um, tell the devil no, not today. Tell the devil no, not today, right? And it says in the song, fear is a liar running out of breath. Because when you are afraid, you stop. And it, mm -hmm. it, it, it halts you, you're like, right? Anytime that you're afraid of something or you get scared, you're, mm -hmm. but it's a liar, especially when you know that you can achieve this goal, especially when you know that you can do this particular thing and fear stands in your way, it's just a liar in that moment. And it's just running out of breath. It's pulling, it's pulling the breath away from you. So that mm -hmm. way you not achieve the, the next big thing that you're going to achieve. So fear being a liar running out of breath is my 
is my statement because I've been, I've been afraid to do so many different things and I didn't allow it to stop me. It was just, it, it's, it's a liar. Fear is a liar, right? And I'm going to keep on pushing and going. Ah, I, I, I love that. I, Listen to the song when we're done. <laughs> uh, uh, girl, I already wrote it down. I'm on it. Yeah, we, I'll be jamming. I'll be jamming. This is gonna be, it's going to be on my playlist now. Um, and yeah, like I think, yeah, that definitely resonate with um, this idea of like feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and the idea too of like we have these limiting beliefs, like and you know that that voice within us that tells us that's not possible or that's not going to happen. That you know, and when we get into trouble is when we're taking action based on those thoughts, right? And not on the this this other way of of seeing possibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious where that ability for you comes from and to see the possibility and to ignore the fear because a lot of people will just hold themselves back. So what is it that you think enables that in you to push past that and and take the risk of, of being disappointed of whatever it is not working out. Like, you know, I think it's my upbringing. I think it's my parents um, who instilled that in me. We didn't touch too much on my mother's story, but my mother came to this country with a third grade education. She did not, she just, she, she barely knew how to read and write. And then she, she, she transformed herself too. And she overcame all these obstacles growing up in Liberia. Um, her mother um, passed away when she was a when she was a baby. She, my mother does not even know what her mother even looks like, but mm. um, she was raised by her father, who was a dynamic hunter, um, and he could not afford to send her to school. So he then um, someone offered to 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 allow her to live with them, and they would send her to school, but they never sent her to school. So she was mm. almost like a house girl. So she would so she ran away, and she was. Um, she, she didn't she didn't have education she met my father my father brought her here and they built themselves and that's how the story of my family um was was born so i think everything my upbringing my how i'm being raised how i all the obstacles in my life is is, is, is the best way to answer that question yeah yeah I, it's what a beautiful story it's like i just it just makes me think of, you know, that you, you are the hope, the hopes and dreams of your parents. Like mm-hmm. it just feels that I feel that mm-hmm. like that what they've gone through was, is not in vain and it's all about the future. Right. Right. Definitely. What they've gone through is definitely not in vain. What they, what, what they envisioned, what they dreamed of for, for themselves may not have cultivated in the way that they wanted at that moment. But what, what, but what do we say? Everything that happens is not in your time. It's in God's time. So Mm. for, for them, it didn't happen for them in that particular way, but it's happening for me. It's happening for their, Mm. their child. So nothing more um, rewarding than to see that you've given birth to this child who um, is making you proud, right? Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh you know, and I'm and I'm wondering now, like, okay, so you've so you've transformed your business into a place where people can gather for all different kinds of reasons. Um, in beautiful Brooklyn, it's just it's a stunning space. And what, like, what, like, what are you manifesting next? Like, what is like, where do you see this going? And like, what, what is that that vision? for tomorrow for you? So I have so many dreams and visions that I'm manifesting for that, for, for my space. One of the big things that I'm manifesting is that people can actually use the, the space. Um, entrepreneurs can use the space totally for free um, if it's being sponsored by a giant corporate company like Target or Walmart or just even some sort of corporate, um, a, a big giant corporate um, um, organization. Another thing that I'm manifesting is to allow people like you to come in the space and host coaching talks, which is something that we're talking about in the near future. Um, and I just want 
it to really truly be an authentic space where people um, can look at it and say, I want to be able to do something in there. And they don't have to worry about the finances that come along with mm -hmm. it. If it I, and, and a part of the reason um, why I want that is because I saw the struggle of building my business as a fitness studio and how space was so hard mm -hmm. to find. Healthy mm -hmm. space, um, mentally, and the, um, um, emotionally was hard to find. And I want to be able to change the entire trajectory of how people um, but I'm back. <laughs> no I, want, I want to be able to just change the trajectory and how pe people um, feel in a space and look for space. Like I, I want that when someone's looking for a space for a party, they're like, I want to feel good in the space and I want to be able to give back. There's not too many people that can do that. One of the things that um, we talked about is um, outside of this is that there's no other space like this, I don't think, in the world that fitness classes are taking place and, and weddings are happening, you know? Or fitness classes are taking place and a church choir rehearsal is happening. I mean, community spaces, people, that's many people getting married in community spaces because it, it doesn't look too great. But this space, it mm. is just an, a beautiful um, location for people to do anything that they can think about that's a micro size, you know? Yes, yes. I, I love that, and, you know, like, I'm definitely a person who's like the the environment is like everything, right? Like what it like what am I feeling? And and certainly your space, you just walk in there and and you just know it's a space that's loved, you know? <laughs> like and it's not because there's all this stuff in there, you know? It's not because like it's all this furniture and da, da, da. it's like you just it's just what you know when you walk in is that this yeah. is a place that that the the person who takes care of it cares. Yeah. Like it just it just communicates that. Um, that's that's beautiful to hear. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh so my I, gosh. My ple my pleasure. Yeah. Like, and then I'm looking around. I'm like, I'm like, there's not even crystals around here. And there's like, you know, because sometimes <laughs> you're like, oh, there's oh, there's that rose quartz. Like, it's like, no, no, no. Like, you don't even need that. It's right. just because of the love that you put in there. Um, and so, you know, I, I think a lot of people, right, are dealing with uncertainty. Like, you've had. A lot of experience with that in your life um and so like what what counsel like what do you want people to know about about the struggles about facing fear about you know keep going even when it's hard like so just just you sharing that about my space just brought me to tears because i work so hard mm -hmm. um for my children, I work so hard for myself, I work so hard for my family, and and to hear that from an outsider, that you can tell that I take mm -hmm. pride in what it is that I do, and that you can just walk in there, and you can feel the love is important to me, because that's mm -hmm. that's important to me. I want everybody to feel feel the love. Um, if you could repeat your question again, I, I kind of lost it. <laughs> no, no, I thank you for stopping with that. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's just, it is those intangibles. It is those intangibles of our, of the energy that we carry and the intention. I think that so often we're not, we don't talk about it as being the, the thing in life. Mm -hmm. Because with that is what enables, I think, what enables that space to be what it is because, because of the intention and the caring and and that I think that principle goes across wherever you show up and whatever you're trying to manifest it's like what where is your heart in that yeah because that that will dictate the the result more than the doing itself more than the cleaning of the floors or you know like whatever that is you know yeah. like that's 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 additive but it's not it's not the thing it's not the magic yes yes Yes. It's not the, it's not the big magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm curious, even for you, you talked a lot about manifesting, right? But also there's a lot of doing in what you've created for yourself. So for you, where is that balance of like the visioning and the manifesting and like the doing and how do you find the way forward in, in creating what you want? So 
I don't even know if I, I don't even know how to answer that question of where's the balance because my mind is always going. Like my mind, I'm always trying to figure out what's the next thing that I need to do to make this space better, mm. make myself better. Um, I'm just always, I'm always in thought. I'm always in that process of doing and thinking. There's really no balance. Mm. I, the only other balance that I can say is that when I have to cook dinner or <laughs> I have to, I have to help with homework, <laughs> but there's no real, there's no real balance for me. I'm, I am an, I, I'm, I'm an, an action um, taker. Mm -hmm. I take action and I, and I do. When I think of something, I plan it and then I do it. I, I, I've always been told mm -hmm. that the most successful people in the world are planners. Um, and that's just, I want to be that a successful person. So this is why I plan and this is why I manifest and this is when I, this is why I do. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. No, I, I thank you for sharing that because everybody has their own way, you know, everybody has a way into that. And uh, yeah, it's just, I am an earth sign. I'm a Virgo. So like the, in your head thinker doer, like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and absolutely. I have to like, find ways to get out of it cooking whatever it is you know <laughs> so that I can give my mind a rest uh, but yeah yeah so um and I can't believe we're coming to the top of the hour this going so fast but I think going back to like one of the questions that I want to ask was around like you know what what advice do you have like what do you want people to know about pursuing their dreams about following paths that that are divergent you know, because I, I, I see your path and it's like, okay, it was the corporate thing. And then it was like, you know, it was, it was all around the houses to get you to, to be doing what, what feels very aligned with your purpose. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, and and a, one of the things that I could say, the advice that I would give is believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will believe in you. And I think that's important advice. Oh no, I lost you. Can everybody hear? I'm spooling. Oh, she left. She's coming back. She's coming back. We missed it. Thanks for sticking around. Mamo and Shayna. I don't know who's in the room, but hopefully we'll get We'll get Danielle back for her sage council. It's like, oh, like, tell us what to do. And then it's like the internet crashed. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get her back. We'll just wait, wait a few minutes for her to come back in here. Um, but I'm so glad that you, all of you who are watching now and later. Yeah, Shana, you're here. I love it. Right. Now. Is today your birthday? Were you, were you, were you the one celebrating your birthday? Um, I'm so glad you're here. You clearly giving your best friend some love here. It's great. Um, always, always important to have the support. <laughs> um, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get her back here, but I'm just, you know, <clears throat> kind of, oh, here we go. Yeah. Here she comes. No, not your birthday. Okay. There was somebody else whose birthday was today. <laughs> Yay. All right. We'll get, we're, we're getting her on. There we this go. This internet is acting up. My phone just completely shut down. Oh my god! That's out so, of nowhere. That's so crazy. That divine intervention here. Um. Yes. <laughs> but but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, we were I'll, I'll about just your simply advice. end by saying uh, what I was saying. But if if it didn't get, um, if you didn't catch it, was simply believe in yourself. I mm -hmm. think that's very important. Um, and because if no one, if you don't believe in yourself, no one will believe in you. And you have to believe in yourself and keep pushing. Never give up. Never, ever, yeah. ever give up. Hi, yeah, Deidre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, I think, and it makes me think you say that, that it's, it's also, and surround yourself with people that believe in you too. That is definitely a, a key component. You need to surround yourself around people who believe in you. Let me tell you, I have so much people that believe in me. It's, 
I, I can't fail because of the amount of belief that is that is surrounded around me. Yes. I, and I am definitely one of them. Like, like, I love that, you know, you're you're creating a space for people to gather, especially now when we are in such need of community, of yeah. finding our tribe, of, of raising our vibrations and letting go of those who aren't coming for the ride. And that's yeah. okay. They're on their own path. It's all good. It's not about, it's not, it's not about saying anything about us. It's just there where they are. Right. Um, you know, and, and I just, I'm wishing you like all, all the big successes, like all the things that you want, all the, the dreams you want to become into reality. And I look forward to finding ways to support you even more and, and bringing those things to life. So I'm just, uh, I'm blessed that our paths have crossed and, and I call you my friend, you know, yes. uh, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to all the things that Atrium 82 is going to do. So for those who are interested in learning more about your space, or connecting with you, hearing more about your story, like how can they get in touch with you? Where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram. They can find me on Facebook. They can go directly to my website, www.atrium82.com. Um, and they can also join us every Tuesday from 6.30 to 8 um, p.m. at our open house. We're, we're there showing people the space and just having conversations and just being able to answer any questions that they may have. Awesome. And is there anything that we didn't cover today that you, you want people to know or that you want to share? No, I think we covered it all. Just, you know, show up at our open house. Come on, come on and visit and, and take a, a, a gander of what Atrium 82 is all about. Yes, yes, I agree, guys. It's a great space. It's a great neighborhood. Barclay Center is right there. There's lots of restaurants, lots of stuff to do. There's, you know, all kinds of, you know, um things going on in, in that neighborhood so yeah oh, yes. and as my best friend said the virtual tour is available online you can do that but we want you to come in the house we want you to come in our home so you gotta you feel can view it. the you virtual tour it. but you gotta feel it on the inside when you actually step in front yes. of the building right? yes i love that yes well thank you so much for your time um and for your story sharing your story sharing the messy middle i i know that it will be of such uh uh, support and solace to people out there that that are trying to to get out of their stuckness. Um, yes. And you are definitely a beacon of hope and and showing us what's possible with that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tosca. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know it. You can't you can't escape me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hun. Love All you. All right, love you, girl. All right. Bye. See you soon. Ciao for now. <laughs>